Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel, Tight Cycling here. Today we're gonna do uh, some badge hunting, uh, simply because I'm a little bit pressed for time. I'm traveling this afternoon, but I thought, why not get one more session in? Um, unfortunately, there weren't any races, rides that looked suitable or uh, fit my schedule. And so I decided to just hop on here in London and see what I haven't done yet. And there are still a couple of options. But today we'll actually do the shortest one that is still un, uh, still locked. And that is London 8. So let's get going on this one. Uh, we'll probably be in the... Yeah, zone 2, right... Uh, it's not going to be like anything stressful today. My watch is telling me for the last uh, two days to, you know, to put a rest day in. I haven't so far. And uh, uh, today I'm also not going to do that. So, but at least we're going to take it a little bit slower than, um, than we would in the race. Um, Actually, I was thinking um, to stay until 2 o'clock, which is when the stage 1 of uh, the Tour Scotland has uh, their stage, stage 1 again, and uh, Rolling Highlands. Uh, I did that yesterday and finished the ride somewhere midfield, I think we came 14th or 15th. Um, fortunately had to let the, uh, the, the front group go at the second last little kicker. Uh, I was, yeah, just not feeling it. My legs were uh, not having enough power and um, yeah, but that's the way it is. So I'm, I'm not complaining, all good. But we'll try again on Sunday. So I should be back on Sunday, or back home, which means that my trusted little Wahoo kicker bike uh, is hopefully going to wait for me and be happy to see me back. And yeah, I saw that it's, uh, I think there's a ride in, this, in the evening at 7. And hopefully that one I will make with some maybe half an hour before to warm up properly and um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll manage. So fingers crossed and um, yeah, fingers crossed for that, that it will actually work. Let's give a ride on here. Oh, maybe he already got one from us. Yeah, not planning on um, chasing anyone unless the difference in speed is very small so that we can easily grab the wheel and maintain the same power and just, you know, to uh, get along here on this, on this ride. Um, yeah, so we are on London 8. And uh, yeah, as you have seen, I've not been on this particular loop, but I have done a lot of the uh, routes very closely associated with this one. So maybe it's just a different direction or a different way to go around the circuit. But I do think that at some point we'll go out to Surrey Hill, which is most likely going to be uh, Fox Hill for us. Um, uh, sorry, Box Hill. Yeah, I, I don't know why I always say Fox Hill. Anyways, um, we also in the in one of the rides, uh, I think it was like one of those makeup rides for the Tour de Swift. They were also in London. And 
I took the whole ride as a yeah easy peasy ride but then once the KOM came around I actually decided to uh, attack that a little and made it up that uh, climb uh, in less than 10 minutes nothing special but at least we put down I think 3.1 watts per kilo for those 10 minutes or almost 10 minutes which was a nice little thing we took this as an you know as an exercise to uh, get the blood pumping a little bit and I was actually thinking about doing this here again but then I actually saw that on Swift Power it only counts for your Z points or the segments that are in there it only counts if it is on a ride or in a race and well this one is not this is just you know us going around the circuit here so yeah that's why I'm probably not going to do anything fancy I'll just try to get the heart rate up to zone 2 and once we are in zone 2 uh, we'll try to stay there for the rest of the ride and yeah this one is only yeah 20 21 kilometers so yeah it says that we should be done in less than one and a half hours I do actually think that it should not even take one hour because um, I think that we would be having an average speed of more than 21-22k but you know let's see just really to get some kilometers in and to make me feel not so bad for abandoning my bike for the next three days yeah for those of you interested I'm actually traveling to Beijing I'm driving myself I have a yeah a administrative meeting tomorrow or appointment that I need to uh, go to in the afternoon and then it doesn't really make sense to you know just go there for like a day too much effort and yeah so use this time see some friends and uh, actually my girlfriend just adopted a cat after she fell in love with a cat that she was babysitting for some time because her mommy was traveling and uh, yeah ever since then she was looking on uh, different adoption websites to see which cats need help and yesterday decided on a cat picked her up and uh, yeah I'm very excited to meet her as well her name is Matilda and uh, well the name she had before was uh, Dudu and yeah she was renamed to Matilda and from the looks of it that seems like a very suitable name and uh, yeah I'm just very excited to meet her anyhow and then there's probably going to be some you know good food and stuff like that happening throughout the weekend and uh, then on Sunday I will probably leave after breakfast early afternoon and that should allow for me to 
be back here maybe at six or so, or hopefully a little bit earlier. And uh, then get back on the bike and see if we can get at uh, to under 20 minutes for the stage one rolling highlands in Scotland. <coughs> I was relatively close yesterday. I thought when I crossed the finish line it was something like uh, 20, 30. Um, but then the official time, I don't know why it's so different, but the official time was I think 20, 40-ish. Um, yeah, so I'll see um, if I stick with the main group or with the front group, even if I lose them on the very last climb, it should be enough to post the time of top 20. Um, so let's see. Also the group yesterday uh, was not massive. It was big enough in the beginning. I think we were about 30 in the front group that whittled down to, I think, 20. And um, yeah, and then when I had to let them go on the second last kicker, I think they were down to 10. And then it was essentially, yeah, a couple of soloists soloist between me and the front group. And uh, then I found like a small little group of two others and uh, tried to stick around with them for some time until finally the last climb up the castle came in and that was the one that, yeah, where I also had those two people go, had to let them go. Anyhow, you're getting stronger every day, every week. And uh, funnily enough, yesterday, I recorded the highest uh, 20 minute power output in uh, in race or in official ride. I had a higher value before um, in my FTP test. So, but not much. The FTP was calculated to be like just around 3, 3.1 what's per kilo, but it was done with the ramp test, not with the 20 minute test. And uh, yeah, usually I write um, very short races where you're not on the course for 20 minutes. And um, yeah, so that's why I probably didn't have a time like this yet. It was only like long rides. If I helped out with the with the sweeper team or where I get close to like two and a half watts for 20 minutes or so. But those were usually efforts that were much shorter than 20 minutes meaning uh, it then takes an average value of, you know, <clears throat> whatever the base power is. And, uh, and those like 10, maybe 10 minutes of sweeping duties that are slightly higher. But anyways, not too bad. Yeah. Usually I would try to 
sprint on those segments here simply because I want to increase my my number um, my set points and <clears throat> yeah uh, my ranking and it all helps with the ranking but if it's just true that it only helps if this is like an officially sanctioned race or ride then of course it doesn't make sense uh, then I'd rather spend here I guess 45 minutes to an hour uh, in zone 2 and take that as a yeah endurance slash uh, short ride not really endurance as we're probably done in less than an hour but anyways at least gets the heart pumping so it's good to let it know that uh, you know every day there's like a little bit of exercise I feel quite unaccomplished if I just veg out for a couple of days eat good food and that's probably going to happen um, tomorrow and Saturday so I yeah, will see all right so this seems to be Trafalgar Square if I'm not mistaken and uh, yeah one of the added benefits for those kind of videos here although nothing really happens the good thing is you can always go back and actually take those as a recon for um, races or rides that are happening on this particular section of the course and I did that actually for the first time <coughs> with stage one of Tour Scotland uh, I watched a video from Eric Eric Lee don't get dropped cycling and you know took like notes on where the climbs are and although I didn't manage to stay with the front group all the way to the finish line I do think that it helped because it is up often at least to me it's very often that you uh, when you see an incline and you don't see the end of it that it's like oh god okay i give up i'm done probably another five minutes of hard climbing i can't do that but if you have the numbers written down then you know that you know this is like a a climb of i don't know 20 meters over 200 meters distance or 300 meters which makes it much more manageable and you know lets you realize that it's like okay this this climb is over in like 15 seconds so push a little harder for those 15 seconds and then try to stay with the back of the group and uh we hang in on the back end of the group recover and that's it of course also on shorter rides it's always easier to push a little bit harder because you know it's going to be over everything is going to be over in like 20 minutes and yeah the first i want to say half of that ride maybe had like 30 meters of elevation and then the back end had like 75 76 meters um, which means 
in the beginning you are still fit anyways and not fatigued, which means that you are essentially rolling through the first 7, 8k at 45 kilometers an hour. Um, and then you see, okay, you have half of it already done. And at this point, we're probably at, I don't know, eight minutes or so. And another way to trick your mind to just say, hey, no, if this is eight minutes, another eight minutes, it's nothing. Of course, there's a climb coming, so it's probably 10 or 11 minutes, but you probably get my point that it's uh, easier for your brain to comprehend or to, you know, to trick your brain a little and say, hey, you know, it's not that much longer. It should keep on going. Anyway, so we are averaging about two watts per kilo. A little less than that, actually, 1.9. Um, but let's see, maybe we can increase this to like two watts per kilo. It would be nice. Heart rate is just below two. No, now it just jumped. To uh, zone two. All right, this is where we go over to Surrey. We are crossing the Thames here. Then this little zigzag ahead is to uh go through the tunnel, go through the subway. And on the other side, I assume that we're going to go left, which is then going to be uh, Fox Hill, which today, uh, again, I will not try to set a best time or to even fight this in any shape or form. But uh, let's just take it easy and try to go at, I don't know, two or so to um, what's, per, uh, what's per kilo. Okay, we're also more than halfway through the right, which is nice. Yeah, if I was really to push, I think it would be quite easy to be under one hour, but not going to happen today. Just want to have an easy peasy to what per kilo right. All right, let's do the arrow here before it actually kicks up. Because no big benefits on the climb. Good arrow at least. Feather would be nice, but no such luck. All right, so just around the bend here, that's where when the, the KOM will start. There you see the red dotted lines. Uh, our ghost avatar will take off because, yeah, just two days ago, I think it was two days ago we did. Yeah, there you go. Two days ago, 947.5. It does. Uh, it does. Uh, Tickle me a little. Um, but not enough for me to abandon my 
plan of having a zone two right. But yeah, when I see, you know, a ghost avatar taking off, it's like I can come on, I can can do that. But uh, yeah, let's stick with zone two today. Get some ride-ons as people pass us. Well done, Yonamitsu and uh, D Power. Well done, you guys. <clears throat> Let's see. Maybe we are lucky and actually overtake some people. Thank you, Kobayashi. Thanks for the ride on. Much appreciated. Hope you're having a lovely day and a good ride. Yeah, so maybe I can also kindly ask you, dear viewer, um, if you're on Swift, you probably do give ride ons left and right. And why not give a YouTube write on, aka a thumbs up? I would much appreciate that and say thanks in advance. Also, maybe consider subscribing. I do hear that it does help with the algorithm. And yeah, there are some future plans on, you know, raising other YouTubers, maybe having our own apparel that you can then uh, also buy if you wanted to. Um, I will actually, my plan is to sell them at cost, uh, simply because, yeah, I do enjoy biking. And uh, I, I do not expect or think that this will ever be as big that, you know, it will generate a continuous flux of income. And that's not really not at all the purpose of this channel. I do have a, uh, a job, a day job, and uh, that more than provides for everything I need. Uh, so I'm in a very lucky position where, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty well and I don't need uh, additional income here from YouTube in order to make it through the week or the months or the year. Um, so whatever benefits I'd have, I would give... Uh, uh, give to you or how do you say that like hand them over to you or pass them on I think that's the right phrase pass them on to you um, so I am thinking of uh, making my my own shirts and since I'm living in China right now this is probably this, the time to do to do that Simply because uh, the the price and the quality, or the the ratio of price to quality, is uh, uh, unbeatable. I have bought a couple of uh, bike shirts and uh, bike pants. Bike pants are a little bit trickier. So there, I probably still need to shop around a little bit more. But as for bike shirts, like this one, for instance, it's maybe a little bit too big because the sizing is, uh, yeah, a little bit tricky. 
you get perfect the first time you buy. So this is an XL and from the dimensions and uh, additional information they gave about what height, what weight of rider that should fit. Uh, yeah, I thought this would be perfect. Maybe a little bit on the um, on the bigger, on the larger side of things, but still fine. And yeah, stuff like this is significantly cheaper than anywhere else in the world. And the quality is really, really nice. Uh, so very nice thin fabric. This one doesn't have the uh, the rubber bands or the the tight fit um, material underneath. Not tight fit, yes, but you know the uh, the stuff that hugs your uh, your skin and then doesn't let the, the 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 fabric move on your skin. Uh, this one doesn't have that, but you know it was. Uh, $15, something like this. I don't actually know exactly. But so there are ways to, you know, if you spend some $20 or $25 for a jersey, which is really nothing compared to prices in Europe and or the US, you get top-notch material, you can actually put, uh, send in your own designs. I think those might be a little bit more expensive. Probably also depends on how many triggers you're buying. But anyways, so that's something I definitely want to do later this year. Uh, I'm still playing around with the, with the logo. I do really like this. Uh, schematic mountain which just saying tight underneath and then even in smaller font the uh, this is gonna hurt tremendously what uh, tight stands for I really like that and I probably stick with uh, for now with like gray on black black on gray play around with different shades of gray and black um anyways just uh stay tuned and maybe one more reason to subscribe to you know get information about this as well as soon as i have them yeah so yeah for this week yeah and i unfortunately didn't manage to or I won't manage the average kilometers that I set out to do every week. I am shooting for 310k per week. And that is every week on average. Because with a very, very small buffer that would allow for the uh, for the final tally of the year being above 1500, uh, uh, 15,000, sorry, 15,000 kilometers, which is actually the plan for this year. So I know some people who do 30 and they would laugh about 20, but for me, it's quite a distance. Okay, we also done the two thirds of the total distance, which is nice. <clears throat> and I'm not sure, but I think this might be the first person that we are 
overtaking. Anyways, in the far distance, I can already see the KOM banner. So with one more um, kind of sharp right turn, uh, left turn, some wiggles, and then you get uh, close to the the KOM arch and yeah this is one of my favorite views is when uh, the camera is actually panning across the the planes on top of the KOM and uh, shooting like a very nice video of you riding getting through the KOM and then riding along this very scenic uh, segment of the course. Yeah, then after the KOM, there's like a additional kicker, um, which is actually surprisingly steep. And uh, I don't know how many vertical meters it has, I'll definitely pay some attention to this now, but I do remember that when I was uh, riding up here at, you know, 3.1 watts per kilo, that I was going through the KOM, and I was like, okay, this was tough. And then there was an additional kicker coming right after that, which, you know, seemed very strange. But so if there are races on this particular course, you know, it would be good for you to know these things, to be ready uh, to either attack or to have uh, to be prepared when others attack, because that is a prime location to put in an extra Dig if you have the legs and trying to, you know, get rid of some people before the downhill. Anyways, so this was the right hand corner, right hand bend, one more to the left, and then we are at the, at the KOM. I actually just saw that heart rate <clears throat> was getting into zone three briefly. So you see, we're quite far away. Our estimated time is uh, sub 15 minutes, but you know, it's nothing near the 10 minutes we did two days ago, but still we would be much quicker than we have previously been. That is before two days ago. I do think at the moment top nine is definitely possible and probably likely if you know, I really focus on, there you go, that's the view I was talking about. Uh, very likely if, you know, I give myself some rest, warm up properly, and then just really smash this up the KVM. I think I could do that. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so now it went on a little downhill and you think, okay, great, this is it. and all of a sudden, there's like a small little, I think it went up to 4%. Now it flattens out again. But there in the distance, you can already see that it will kick up again. So 
Uh, I unfortunately missed the first couple of meters, but let's say we are at uh, 186 vertical. And let's see what we are when we are on top of this. Yeah, see here, ten percent. That's quite quite something. So now I forgot again. I think we started at what eight, one eight four. So this is probably like twenty thirty meters. Which, in and of itself, is. You know, not a big deal, but if you just expect a downhill and it just doesn't come, you know, So yeah, okay, not 20, not 30, a little less than that, vertical meters, but still, that is about, I think the final climb uh, up to the castle in Scotland's, or Tour Scotland stage one, I think they're all about like 15, 16 vertical meters, really doesn't sound too bad. But, yeah, when you come, you know, flying down the section before, and uh, it essentially feels like you're coming to a standstill. So let's see if we can get into the super tuck, which we should be able to. So I think there's maybe, so here maybe, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Super tuck. See, without any pedaling, we do 73 kilometers an hour. That's quite quick. In the race, you would definitely need to put pressure down on the pedals doing that downhill. As otherwise, they would just pull away from you. They are so used to put out, let's say, 250 watts or like, let's say, 3 watts per kilo. And... Uh, if they do that on the downhill, even if you're in the super tuck, you will not catch up with them. And uh, if you then lose the group where aerodynamics matter, that's going to be an issue. All right. So now we are going back to the, to the subway station. And so going into the tunnel here is easy. Coming out of the tunnel on the other side, not so much. There we have, I think, I want to say 15% and like 8 or 9 meters or so of climbing. So again, let's try to keep an eye out on the, on the actual numbers. <clears throat> yeah, we'll definitely beat the hour. Um, I think we'll probably be uh, coming in before uh, 48 minutes.
Okay, so again, this little ramp here. All right, so we have 200 meters. And, and now we're going to hit the uphill here at 15%. And to 10. So yeah, 10 meters, 9 or 10 meters on this little thing. But it definitely slows you down just simply because it's so steep. Across the bridge here. Yeah, also I checked yesterday for the total vertical meters that I have towards the average challenge or beyond the Everest challenge for the uh, unlocking hopefully the front bike soon and uh, it was 33,300 and unfortunately not 33 but 28 meters uh, it would have been so cool if it was 3333 three um but yeah it wasn't anyhow um so this was um london eight yes london eight and uh, i will probably continue for a couple of more uh, kilometers just so uh, i finish maybe the hour or so but i will uh, leave you here with my impression of this particular route. London is very nice. It uh, offers um, beautiful scenery in the Surrey Hills, but also the town, London itself, is designed like very nicely. Uh, yeah, absolutely love it. You can find all different kinds of routes ranging from very short to the longest that they have on on Swift, 170 something kilometers. Uh, lots of climbing possible, and uh, yeah, just really like it. So feel free to subscribe. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you want me to do something else, go on a different route, talk less, talk more. Let me know uh, in the comments down below, and. Uh, yeah, we'll just go through the banner here and then see if we unlock the route batch, see how many XP points we are making or getting. And then I will just say goodbye to you folks. So let's see. So route completed, 410 XP. Perfect. That brings us to let's say 45 percent or so of level 30. Um, yeah still a long way to go but we'll get there. Anyways um, this is it for today so thanks a lot for watching thanks for joining me. I hope this you know gets you on the bike or onto Swift and to the virtual world of London or Vatopia or any of these amazing worlds. And as always, ride hard, have fun, tight. So tight cycling out, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.